what's going on y'all what is going on y'all happy thursday let me post this comment and pin it so y'all will know what we are talking about today what's going on guys happy 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 thursday okay let me know if you all can hear me i know you can see me let me know that you can hear me and i want to know where this delay is a lot of the times there is a delay in the live so definitely let me know what the delay is let me know where y'all are watching from let me know where y'all are watching from. I am in Atlanta, Georgia. For those of you all who don't know, we're going to go ahead and get this party started. Welcome to another session of hashtag TBTT, Tax Boss Talk Thursdays, okay? Where each and every Thursday we get together as tax professionals and talk all things tax business related. So if you want to start your tax business, build a tax business, or grow a profitable tax business, you want to be here each and every Thursdays, right here live on IG at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's where we all come. If you have questions, you can ask me anything about the particular topic or any question at all. I am available to you all each and every Thursdays. Who am I? I am Tatiani Favors. I am a tax business coach, which is a fancy way of saying I am a business coach for tax professionals, okay? I have been in the taxation industry for 17 years, and I've been a business coach for the last six years now, okay? And so I absolutely love what I do. I actually love giving y'all the game. I actually love and absolutely love paying my experience forward, okay? Paying my experience forward to all of you all because it was not a pretty start for me, but it can be a much prettier start for all of you all because y'all have a me. Y'all have someone who would give you the game up front so you can avoid a lot of the pitfalls that I fell victim to, and that is my ministry, okay? And this has been my TED Talk. No, I'm just playing. So today, like the pen says, we are going to go ahead and get right into it. We're talking about the three ways learning new skills can actually harm your tax business. Yes, I'm being defiant today, okay? how learning new skills can actually harm your tax business. So often we think, okay, let me learn a new skill. Let me add a new aspect or a new service to my tax business so I can make more money. And that thinking is not incorrect, okay? The thinking of, I need to make more money. My business needs to make more money. So let me add a new service to my business to create more funds. That is not a bad way of thinking, okay? That's not a wrong mindset at all. The disconnect happens though, where it becomes a little wonky is when we say, okay, I need to make more money in my business, so I personally need to do more, okay? I need to be the one providing the actual service that I want to add to my business, okay? Not understanding, or not even understanding, not remembering that we are a separate entity from our tax business, okay? If you're not functioning as a sole proprietorship, if you're still functioning as a sole proprietorship, that's an entire that's an entirely different live for you and yeah another time but if you are an llc if you are an s corp a c corp or partnership you are a different entity from your tax business okay so you have a name and you have an identifying number which is your social security number your tax business has its own name and its own identifying number which is an ein Okay, we tend to forget that we are two totally different, well, that we are a separate entity from our tax business. So we think that we are our tax business and our tax business is us. So we put, we tend to put ourselves in that I have to do more personally to make more money in my tax business versus saying, okay, I need to make more money in my tax business. So I need, so my tax business needs to add a service that can be totally different from you personally 
getting or providing the service in your tax business. And so that leads me to the first way of how learning a new skill can actually be harmful to your tax business is you are you get stuck working in your business versus working on your business. Okay, you get stuck working in your business versus working on your business. What do I mean by this? I mean that if you are bogged down with working in your business, doing everything in your business, then you cannot work on your business, meaning growing your business, meaning elevating your business. As the founder, the owner, the CEO of your tax business, your ultimate job is growing your company, okay? Your ultimate job is figuring out how to grow your company, how to provide, how to get more income and things of that nature. If you are so bogged down working in your business, providing the actual services, okay, then you have no time to grow your business in the way that you would like, okay? And also, if you're working in your business, you're not a business owner, you are self-employed, which is okay if that's where you want it to end. But if you have aspirations of being a business owner, then you can't be bogged down working in your business simultaneously at the same time. You cannot both work in your business and grow your business effectively at the same time. Trust me, I've tried and it just doesn't work. Okay, it just simply does not work because in order to really function in your zone of genius as a business owner, you have to have clarity. You have to be creative. You have to be creative enough to know, okay, how am I going to grow my business? What partnerships am I going to form? What new thing am I going to do to grow my business? You can't have that clarity or won't have that clarity or that creativity if you've been bogged down in your business all day. You're poops. You don't have the energy to even muster up in order to really grow your business significantly. So let me give you all an example because y'all like examples and y'all tend to get the picture a little bit better. So I was literally just talking to one of my Tax Boss Academy members about this during our meeting on Tuesday. So she is in the process of growing her business and she has taken strides like this past tax season. She hired people, all of that. Like she's growing her business, but she also wants to implement business returns. She wants to start doing business returns in her tax business which, and I'm not talking about Schedule C's, I'm talking about 1065 partnerships, 1120 S's, S Corps, 1120 C Corps, okay? Those actual business tax returns. But she was thinking that she wanted to actually learn how to prepare business taxes herself. She actually wanted to learn how to prepare the business taxes herself. And so we were talking about that and because because she of course wanted to increase her revenue and that is a great way to increase your revenue to start doing business taxes but i told her if you decide to learn how to do business taxes then you are putting yourself back in a position of working in your tax business and it's going to erase everything that we've done over the past year that you've been working on your tax business why because say she gets a lot of business clients okay and she's the only person in her tax office who knows how to prepare business tax returns, then boom, there she is right back in her office until 10 o'clock at night, performing these services, preparing business taxes. All of her other people on her staff, they don't know how to do business taxes. She's the only one who knows how to do business taxes. So the people that she's hired, it kind of balances out because she's still busy she no longer has that time that she now worked for. Maybe she's making more money, but at the cost of time, okay? At the cost of time. So you have to ask yourself, A, do you want to be the only person in your tax business who knows how to perform a certain, uh, who knows how to perform or provide a certain service? Because when you start thinking like that, that means that you always are positioning yourself to work in your tax business. You can't 
pass it off to a to you can't outsource it you can't pass it off to a team member because you are the only person in your business who knows how to provide this service and so that's a conversation i heard and i had so what is the solution to this because you can actually make more money in your tax business and add an additional service without you putting in additional time for a long period of time. And how can you do this? Of course, one is, of course, you can hire someone, okay? You can hire someone just like you hired the rest of your staff to perform regular to individual tax preparation services and just going with the example that I used earlier. Now you can hire someone who knows how to do a business, uh, business tax returns, okay? Also, another thing is you can partner with someone else who actually already does business tax returns. You can actually partner, instead of hiring someone, you can create a partnership with someone that's mutually beneficial, that they're giving you clients, you're sending clients their way, and actually, partnerships can be a great way of, A, expanding your portfolio and increasing your um, client, but also you're not having to pay anyone, you know, whether it's per hour or whatnot because you work with them. You actually have a partnership with someone and you can create a process or a system that's very seamless for your client. So your client won't even feel like they're going to a different um, uh, 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 company to get these services provided to them. They can just come to you and say, hey, I want business returns and whatever you have set up with your partner is a seamless transition for your client. A third way is referring, okay? Referrals. You can find someone or someone's business who actually does business tax returns and we're just using business tax returns as an example. Okay, you can find someone and get a kickback, okay, or a referral fee for giving them that client. You're owed that because that person wouldn't have that client if it wasn't for you, okay? So, is so the, the end result is still you increasing your growth, increasing your sales, increasing your income, but you still have your time. You see how the goal is, okay, I need to make more money in my tax business, but if you but if you provide the service, you might be making more money, but you're also spending more time too. But if you have another option, like the ones I just mentioned, then you can still increase your income without having to put forth so much time for a long period of time, okay? So that's one way how... Um, learning a new skill can severely harm your tax business. Um, and so the second, the sec, so yes, y'all tag your friends. If you have, if you know someone who wants to start a tax business or already starting a tax business, already have a tax business rather, um, they need to hear this information because it doesn't matter what level you are at. Everyone falls victim to one of the three things that I'm mentioning today because it's a thing to learn a new skill. And so for many of you, you're like, you know what? I know I probably should be working on my business versus working in my business, but I'm not there yet. And I genuinely want to learn this new skill I want to offer. That is where some of you are, are now. And that's okay, that is okay. I am here to plant the seed, okay? I am here to plant the seed to you all so you'll know that, okay, ultimately I need to be working on my business versus working in my business. But for now, I will learn this skill. So for those of you all who are there, who actually still want to learn a particular skill, then that leads me to the second way learning a new skill can harm your tax business. And I want you to be aware of this so you can avoid this. I want... I do not want you all to get stuck in the learning phase, okay? Learning a new skill can be harmful to your tax business if you get stuck in the learning phase, aka you're a lifetime student, okay? You're a lifetime student. So what does that mean? That means that you have all of this knowledge. You have all of this knowledge, on how to on different skill sets that you decided to learn to enhance your tax business but you haven't implemented any of it 
okay? You haven't implemented any of it. Guys, you have to know, and I want you, because I've been stuck here before, and I've, I've been coaching for the last six years, and a lot of people get stuck at this stage, stuck in the learning phase. Oh, I'm learning this. I'm learning that. They're always learning something, never implementing anything. Guys, let me give you the game. You must give yourself time for implementation. You must give yourself time to implement what you have learned. If you don't, then whose business are you growing? What, what progress are you really making? You're not really making that much progress, okay? The formula is learn, implement. Learn, implement, learn, implement. That is the process, okay? If you do not give yourself time to implement the things that you've learned, then you are significantly delaying your growth, okay? You are significantly delaying your growth. Why? Because part of being a business owner is trial and error. Part of being a business owner is trial and error. You must know what's working and what is not working for your tax business, okay? Because keep in mind, what's working for someone else's tax business may or may not work for your tax business. And you will never know that if you don't get out here and get that experience and start implementing what you've learned, okay? We have to be aware of what's going right, what's going wrong, what's working, what's not within our tax business so we can pivot as such. If we don't have that data, if we don't have that information, then how can we make the necessary pivots in order to grow our tax business? We can't, okay? Everything is theory now because everything is inside of your head. You haven't implemented everything. So you don't even know if what you learned will work or not. So I want y'all to avoid that, okay? I want you to avoid that. And, and, okay, all right, I might I might be about to pull someone's card with this one, but y'all know my favorite pastime is pulling cards now. So here I go. A lot of you want to seem like you're doing more than what you're actually doing, okay? You want to seem like you're doing more just to get that pat on the back. Okay, you're always learning something. You're always in the process of learning something so you can do something great with it, okay? You're always working towards something great, but that's just not enough, okay? That's not enough. You need to get out there and get that experience. You can't just always, oh, I'm learning this skill so I can do this in my tax business and never do anything in your tax business. A lot of y'all just want that pat on the back, like, oh yeah, look, she she's learning something to implement it in her business is going to be great it's going to be huge <clears throat> but if you never implement it then no one knows if it's going to be huge or not with including yourself sorry um so that is the second thing that i really want you all to avoid is becoming a lifelong student okay becoming a lifelong student and getting stuck in the learning phase that can severely harm your tax business because you're not implementing anything and you're delaying your success, okay? The third thing and what we're discussing is the three things, the three ways of learning new skills can harm your tax business, okay? The third way learning a new skill can harm your tax business is you're spending too much money in the wrong arena, okay? You're spending too much money in the wrong arena, Instead of spending hundreds and thousands of dollars learning new skill after new skill after new skill or wasting time trying to figure it all out on your own, consider this. Consider identifying what you want your role to be in your tax business and then outsourcing the rest. Save all of that money to outsource the rest or to hire someone, okay? Let's put an example with this. Of course, as business owners, we need a level of knowledge on how to market our business. But it doesn't mean that we go out and spend a thousand dollars on trying to teach ourselves how to market our tax business, okay? Um, especially if you have no marketing experience and that is not your ministry. Even if you learn the skills, okay, to this say thousand dollar pro marketing program, 
it's not your zone of genius. If you know that marketing and sales is not your zone of genius, you're just doing your business a disservice anyway. So why don't you take that same thousand dollars and hire someone or outsource someone whose zone of genius is sales, whose zone of genius is marketing. And if they're great at it, they will be able to take what you're trying to convey to your audience and what your goals are and twist it in a way that works for marketing and works for sales, okay? I want you all to approach your tax business like the CEO from up front, like a business owner, like a boss from the beginning, okay? I'm here to plant these seeds in your mind, okay? Because no one planted these seeds. I had to learn all of this myself. So instead of being a one woman or one man band trying to learn all these different skills so you can just do everything yourself and never have any time, then how about saving some of this money for outsourcing? Sit down and say, okay, ultimately, when it comes to my tax business, what is the role that you want to play in your tax business? There is no wrong answer. Okay, there is no wrong answer. Some people genuinely like to prepare taxes. That was me. That was me for the first 10 years of my career. I, I was a geek. I genuinely love to prepare taxes. So that's what I did. Some people genuinely love talking and doing lives and, 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 and marketing. This is a form of marketing right here. Okay, some people love doing that. Some people love answering emails or some people... If you want to function as the CEO of your business in the full capacity where you only focus on how to grow your business, that's an option too. No matter what your reason is or what your ideal role is in your business, it's not a wrong answer. What I want you to do is just identify what that role is and then start to outsource the rest then start to outsource the rest to other people whose zone of genius is stuff that you don't like to do anyway in your business or things that are not the zone of genius within your business but still needs to be done, okay? You don't wanna spend all this money and then say, oh, well, I don't have any money to hire anyone. Well, then go ahead and start to implement the skills that you've learned. But once you start to implement the skills that you learn, it goes back to the first reason. You're working in your business versus working on your business. So all three of these things kind of are like a hamster wheel. Because if you're not on one, you're on two. If you're not on two, you're on three. And if you're not on three, you might be back on one or two. Okay? It is a never-ending cycle. So I want the, the goal of this entire live today is to say, hey, you can't do everything yourself, okay? Learning new skills is, 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 is a temporary situation, okay? Especially if you want to be an actual business owner and work on your business, okay, learning certain skills so you can teach other people so, for, so you can hire is okay. But if you do learn a new skill, I want you to go in with the mindset, okay, I'm learning this skill because A, I'm going to implement it immediately and then I'm going to teach someone so I can hire someone. Or I really don't want to be a business owner. I just want to be self-employed and I actually want to contract work for other people. That's how I'm going to get the check. It's no right or wrong answer. Just have a plan for the new skill that you're learning and not just to get a pat on the back that you know how to do bookkeeping now or you know how to do credit repair now or whatever skill that you are trying to get thinking that that's the only way to grow your tax business because it's not, because it is not, okay? The ultimate goal for me was to be a business owner and the difference between a business owner and a self-employed individual in a nutshell, how, let me tell it, is if you are self-employed, you still have to show up to make money. If you get sick, if you go on vacation, if you don't do any work, you don't make any money. But if you are a business owner, you can be sick, you can be skydiving, you can be on vacation, you can be sleep. Your business will still function without you and you do not have to physically show up in order to make money, okay? That is the difference. And so if your goal is business ownership, 
then learning all of these new skills is not a commodity for you. Then learning all of these new skills is a waste of time. So it might be outside of your comfort zone to say, okay, I'm not going to learn these new skills. I'm going to learn just enough to know whoever I hire, if they are doing it right or not. But I have to outsource. I have to hire. Because if you're trying to reach six figures in your business or more, okay, you can't do it by yourself, period, point blank. You cannot do it by yourself and still have the level of life that you say you want, all right? We tend to think that, especially new as new entrepreneurs and new business owners, we tend to think that we must do everything within our business, okay? And sometimes, especially when you first start off, you are wearing multiple hats. But I want you to know that if you are currently wearing multiple hats, it needs to be a temporary thing. It's the end to it. You're not wearing multiple hats because this is what you think business ownership looks like. Because that's not what it looks like. You know, what you're doing, you're on your way to overwhelm. You're on your way to to, to overwhelm and, and exhaustion wearing multiple hats for a long period of time. No, okay? No, it's temporary, all right? Like I said, I'm here to plant the seeds in your mind because these things can get you stuck and delay your success significantly. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the three real quick. If this is, if you're just coming in, definitely catch the replay and, I, and I'll explain um, where I explain each of these three things in detail. But the three things, the three ways on how learning a new skill can uh, actually harm your tax business. The first way is you get stuck working in your business versus working on your business. If you're the one providing all of the services because you're the one that you're the only one who knows how to provide certain services in your tax business, then you can't possibly be working on your business, working on how to grow your business if you are so bogged down with clients all day, every day. Trust me, I know. Okay, you don't want to get stuck working in your business versus working on your business. Number two, you get stuck in the learning phase. That means you're learning, 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 and you're not implementing anything. Okay, so you just become a lifetime student. You're learning bookkeeping, you're learning credit repair, you're learning all of these things to add to your tax business, but you're actually not implementing any of it. So you get stuck in that learning phase. I want you to avoid that, okay? That is definitely a way on how learning skills can be harmful to your tax business. And the third way is you are spending too much money in the wrong arena, okay? Instead of spending money outsourcing and hiring people, you're spending money on training yourself on how to do a skill that you're only going to do me, that's only going to be, that you're not going to do any justice with because it's not your zone of genius, Okay? You're going to be mediocre at this certain skill because it's just not your ministry. And that's okay. Keep it funky with yourself and understand what's your ministry and what's not. The things that you are good at and what you're not. But also the things that you are interested in and what you're not. Okay? Just because you're good at something doesn't necessarily mean that you should be doing it within your business. I'm very good at communication and writing emails and responding to emails, but that doesn't mean I do it for my company. Why? Because responding to emails all day is busy work, but that's not my zone of genius. I'm very good at it, but that's not my zone of genius. And it takes away from me being creative enough to know to function in my zone of genius in my ceo role of my company on how to actually grow my business you get what i'm saying and i want you all to be able to make those distinctions so that is all for this week's tax boss talk thursdays do i have any questions from any of you do i have any questions from any of you about what we're talking about today or any questions about anything, your tax business, if you want to start a tax business, build a tax business, or significantly grow a tax business, 
click the link in my bio and apply to be a part of Tax Boss Academy, where we do exactly that. We help you get the clarity that you need as an aspiring or existing tax professional to ultimately help you start, build, and grow a profitable tax business, okay? If you are... If you do not understand how to start your tax business or what you need to do as a business owner, that's exactly what we do. We help develop tax professionals into business owners, okay? You don't have to be a tax preparer for the rest of your life. You can actually be a business owner. And that is my personal mission and my business mission to help to, to help uh, tax professionals transition from being just tax preparers to actual bona fide business owners. And that's what we do in the Tax Boss Academy. So if you are interested in that, definitely DB, DBM me. <laughs> DM me Tax Boss Academy and I'll send you a link so you can read more about it. Or you can go ahead and just schedule a call with me. You'll first apply to Tax Boss Academy by clicking the link in my bio. This is on YouTube. I will put the link down below in the description box. You go ahead and answer this um, questionnaire, which is the application, and schedule some time with me so I can speak with you so I can see if you're a good fit for Tax Boss Academy and the Tax Boss Academy is something that you feel will help you because we don't let everyone in, okay? Just because you have the money does not necessarily mean that you will be let into Tax Boss Academy because I am very, 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 very protective over this community because everyone that's in this community is on a certain vibration, on a certain mindset, and they are ready to go. They want to actually change their circumstances and they are all coachable, okay? So I personally talk to every single person that comes into the Tax Boss Academy that's actually part of the, one of the parts of my business that I love, talking to you all, seeing exactly where you are and telling you exactly how we can help you, okay? So DM me, Tax Boss Academy, if you're interested in the Academy and or just go ahead and apply. Okay, set some time up and we'll have a conversation. Okay, guys, if I don't have any questions, I will end this. I will see y'all next week. Peace.